Hey everyone, this is our Dr. Clyde Letsom, and today what I'd like to do is go over uh, constant acceleration along an inclined plane. Uh, the reason why I want to go over this is because sometimes there's a little bit of confusion as to uh, the specific forces that are going around uh, uh, working on the system, this type of a system anyway, and how to calculate them. Uh, so what we want to do first here is let's start off with a very simple system. In this case, we're not on the incline. We're just looking for the acceleration or pardon me, the um, trying to figure out what that constant acceleration is of this box uh, in this situation. So in this case, our box is actually accelerating to the right. All right. If we draw our axis on the box here, we can now begin to uh, work on our free body diagram and if we think about the forces that are acting on this box remember it's accelerating to the right is we would have a force uh, pointing upward which is n which is our normal force we'll have the force which is pushing the box to the right which we will use capital F for that we'll have a lowercase f here indicating friction that's pushing in the opposite direction or to be more specific acting in the opposite direction and we would have work that's actually uh, pulling not work but pardon me uh, weight that's actually pulling the uh, box downward okay so again we have acceleration we have the normal force we have weight we have force that's moving the box and we have friction now using Newton's uh, law we know that summation of forces in our y direction in this case since we have only two forces in our y direction okay is going to be equal to n which is going in the positive direction that's our normal force Okay, and we'll have W, which again is our weight, and that's going the opposite direction or negative direction in this case. And so the the sum of the two of these, okay, is going to give us our mass times acceleration in the y direction. And again, uh, or maybe I didn't say this before, but the box is not moving in the y direction. So because the box is not moving in the y direction, what that means then is our forces then, or the acceleration then in the y direction is equal to zero which therefore then if we look down here means that our normal force and our weight has to be equal to each other all right so for our forces now in the x direction we have two forces here we have forces pushing the box to the right and we have friction friction that's actually working in the opposite direction when we sum the two of those together remember uh, force in this case is heading to the right so that's positive and friction is heading to the left which is negative and both of those are going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration of the box moving in the x direction. When we put that to our equation here, we end up with f minus lowercase f is equal to m times ax. Now, if we deal with a frictionless uh, surface, and remember, there's in real life, no, there's no surface that we can find as frictionless. But we may model a system as being frictionless, let's say, if we're working on like a... a Air, air hockey table, right, where we have the air pushing the puck upwards, uh, which allows it to have minimal contact with the actual table. Okay, so in a case like this where uh, where we have, uh, where it's frictionless, or quote unquote frictionless, that means then the force that's pushing the box in this case then will be equal to mass times the acceleration in the x direction. All right, so that's our, that would give us what our constant acceleration would be if uh, this box here is being pushed towards the right. Now, in this case, we've moved now from that case now to uh, incline, uh, incline plane. All right. In this case, we have an incline plane. We have the box that's on there. Uh, naturally, if the frictional force is low, we're going to have an acceleration of the box going downward. Okay. We have an acceleration of the box going downward, the incline plane. So what we'll do again is very similar to the last problem we would draw our axis along the box here all right and when we draw our axis along the box then we will then uh, come up with our free body diagram which will be uh, again the forces acting on this box and so our forces that will be acting on this box is we would have some sort of force that's pushing the box down in this direction we would have weight that's pulling the box down in this direction and we would have our frictional force uh, working against the force that's pushing the box down to the right and again we'd have our normal force now it's important to mention here our normal force is always 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 going to be perpendicular okay perpendicular to the surface so because of that 
We cannot put our normal force going straight up here like it was in our previous example, but it has to be perpendicular to the surface. All right. Uh, something else that's important to point out here is that the weight, the weight, no matter what direction it is, the weight will always be pointing downward, straight downward towards the uh, surface here. OK, or towards the earth, if you will. All right. And so uh, given all that information, then um, we get, we also have an additional. Uh, well, we don't have a, an additional force, but the force that's along here, we're going to have a force that's along here. This is actually going to be a uh, one of the components of our weight. And the force that's actually pushing the box in this direction is also a component of our weight. And we'll calculate those values a little bit later. OK, and so here what we are looking at is we're looking at our original um, axis if this box was on a level surface. And you'll notice that when we put this uh, new axis here with the dotted red lines, which will include um, a dotted red line that goes down here, it's kind of hard to see. What we'll notice is that then we'd have a, a set of uh, angles, if you will, that's being created between what our axis is now and what our axis would have been if we were on a flat surface. So the dotted line, red line is what it would have been if we were on a flat surface. The solid red line is what it is on the inclined plane here. Okay. Now the angle between each of these you'll notice or uh, we may not notice is actually equal to theta. They're all equal to each other. Okay. Because all we did was we spun, right? The axis from being totally uh, up and down for y and left to right for x to now it being uh, relative to the surface of the inclined plane. And again, all of these then uh, angles between what it was before and what it is now to where the, ang where the uh, axis is um, creates uh, is equal to theta. The angle between there is equal to theta. And that theta or those thetas are actually equal to the amount of uh, the angle at which the ramp was actually uh, raised. So this theta is equal to this theta, which is equal to this theta, this theta, this theta. Okay, so I think you guys get the idea. All right, so now let's go back to our equation and using Newton's uh, law here. And so our summation of forces in the y direction, okay? And by the way, our new axis, we're dealing with the solid uh, line here as our new axis. So this is how we're looking at everything relative to this. So our y-axis now for this uh, system is this way. Our x-axis for this system is this way. So our sum of forces uh, for in the y direction is equal to the normal force, which is uh, going down here. And uh, the uh, what we're going to do is subtract now the weight, the y component of the weight, which is actually over here. This is the y component of the weight. This would be the x component of the weight. Okay, so our y component of the weight, x component of the weight. So when we subtract the normal force, uh, pardon me, the weight in the y direction for, or the y component of the weight from the normal force, that is going to be equal to m times um, our acceleration here. Okay, uh, in the y direction. And again, uh, what's happening is relative to the surface. Okay, relative to the surface of this inclined plane, there will be no acceleration. Okay, and for now our x components, we have our frictional force, which is pulling in this direction. We have, oh, pardon me, our frictional force, which is pulling in this direction, which is negative in this case. And we'll have our force, again, which is going to be actually the x component of the weight uh, pulling in this direction. So again, uh, our y component of the uh, weight, then we need to figure out what that is, right? And since we know what the, we, we can say that the angle in here is theta, okay? This x component, or pardon me, the, the y component of the weight here then is going to be adjacent to the theta here. So because it's adjacent to, then when we want to find the um, that y component of the weight, it's going to be equal to the weight itself, which is w, which is going down here, times the cosine of theta. And again, the theta is the angle in between uh, these two here. And that will give us the um, weight in the, in the y direction again, because this is this here is adjacent to. OK, it's adjacent to the angle. And so when we calculate this out, we get that normal force then is going to be equal to W cosine of theta. 
for our x uh, component, our force here, which remember is our x component of w, that's going to be equal to w sine theta. And the reason that's equal to w sine theta is because this here, the, the opposite side over here, from this angle is actually parallel to the force that's here and that's why I drew this force a little bit shorter this time it's actually parallel to that force right there and so therefore then they have the same uh, magnitude okay and so we can rewrite this equation here then as W sine theta minus F which is equal to M uh, mass times the acceleration in the X direction if the surface happens to be frictionless then the weight in the x co the, the uh, x component weight which is our force in this uh in this problem is equal to w sine theta which is equal to m times uh the acceleration in the x direction okay all right so we talked about theta how do we find theta if we want to find theta remember theta is this angle in here and it's equal to all the other thetas we had on the uh on the previous screen okay so remember if we're trying to find theta we can say okay if we know the length of the opposite side, how much the uh, the ramp has been raised, that's the opposite side, and we know the length of the ramp, okay, which is our hypotenuse, then we can figure that that's equal to sine times theta, and then we can find theta by taking the inverse sine of our opposite of our hypotenuse, and that will give us theta, okay? So now, using that information, all right in our previous equation where we said that the force was equal to mass times acceleration and for the x component of uh the weight remember that was equal to w times w times sine theta okay which is m times a and if you all recall we can find a weight uh by that's equal to mass times gravity right so if i replace that w here with m times g i get this equation right here because i have mass on both sides i can Cancel, those will cancel out because m divided by uh, m on both sides ends up giving you this equation right here, which is g times sine theta, uh, which is equal to the acceleration in the x direction. Okay, and so that's equal to our acceleration in the x direction. It looks like I wrote this twice, but that's okay. Uh, we can manipulate this in order to find what the acceleration is in the x direction. All right, uh, if you all remember sine of theta we said before was equal to opposite over hypotenuse and so therefore then g times uh, opposite over hypotenuse is giving us our acceleration in the x direction okay now we can use that information then by using one of our kinematic equations in order to figure out what the acceleration is uh, uh, the, uh experimentally remember what we just, we just found actually was a theoretical so now we can find it experimentally by using this kinematic equation here, where x is equal to the final displacement from our reference point. And the reference point, let's just think of that as a point at which we started paying attention to the experiment. Okay, uh, x of 0 is the initial displacement from that reference point. v sub 0 is equal to initial velocity at that initial time of interest when we became interested in the, uh, in the experiment. And t is equal to the duration of the experiment from the initial to the final time of interest. And a of x is equal to acceleration along uh, down the uh, uh, acceleration of the glider in this case a box down the track all right uh, if we consider that we start at rest and at the top of the uh, ramp there v sub zero becomes zero x of zero becomes zero and so that kinematic equation then these two terms go to zero leaving us with x is equal to half ax times t squared all right and so we can manipulate this equation to get two divided by T, x, dot t squared, pardon me, which is a of x. Now, that's the acceleration, but what if we wanted to find the velocity at our final uh, time that we were interested in this experiment? Well, we can use another uh, equation here, okay, where v of f is equal to v0, ax of t, v is the final uh, velocity of the time that we're interested in, v0 is the initial velocity, t is equal to the duration, uh, and then uh, a of x is equal to the acceleration down the glider, okay? And so if we say again that the, the box starts from at rest, then that equation that we just showed becomes this, okay? And we can say then that, remember that we found this before for the acceleration, we can actually plug this into that equation up here and end up with this equation for our final velocity okay so this will be equal to our final velocity uh, which is 2 times x divided by t all right so this was a very quick explanation on constant acceleration along an inclined plane 
Uh, please do subscribe to my website, uh, pardon me, to my YouTube channel and visit my website for more information about me. And if you like this video, please do give me a nice thumbs up or a like.